Japan Service Provider Management Board. Prior to joining Cisco, Navneet was the head of legal general counsel for Wipro, America's geography based in Boston. And before Wipro, he was associated in the IT and telecoms practice of the law firm Simons and Simons based in London. He, Navneet has a broad and extensive experience working on complex technology related matters for a number of companies. So on that note, on that note, a warm welcome to Navneet for his very important remarks with respect to the opening uh, session here at the Gen Next 2022, focusing on the disruptive technologies demanding disruptive solutions. Navneet Ji, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Amna. That was, uh, you know, the introduction was so good that I was impressed with myself, right? So, uh, which is probably not as true, but, uh, but thank you for those kind words. And thank you, uh, Vineet, for the opening uh, comments. I think that really, really set the stage for us in a very, very, uh, very, very clean way. So I will, I will, I realize I am following a very good speaker and I have another very good speaker after me. So I'll try and and try and uh, you know meet the same standards. Uh, I think from my perspective, when I look at uh, Vinit spoke about the disruption that's happening in the in the industry, uh, and and the focus obviously of our conference is on technology. But from my viewpoint, you need to look at the bigger context as well as what's happening around the world. Uh, I think there's one thing that we can all say is certain. Uh, which is that the, our future right now is a little uncertain, right? And and that's largely driven by the by the changes that we have been seeing across the globe, uh, whether it's the pandemic, whether it's the uh, trade wars that were going on uh, between the larger economies in the world, to actually an actual war, which we none of us thought we would see, uh, going on in the same region as uh, as World War Two. Uh, in addition to that, we have the ongoing issues that were always present. There is protectionism that's creeping up in many countries. There, is the, uh, there are concerns about the economy and how, that's, uh, how, how it's going to proceed and whether you know, a recession is around the corner and, and the like. So when you, look at, when you look at the entire gamut of change that we are seeing across the globe, uh, you see that this has helped uh, build certain things. Uh, digitization, as we need mentioned, is suddenly become key. I think if you talk to any organization today, it doesn't matter what industry they are in, they all want to be a technology company. Uh, you know, there was a, uh, there were comments about how you, electricity supply companies, for example, will become IoT companies in the future because, you know, they don't need anybody to come and check anything. It will uh, automatically via the internet send you your bill. Uh, so I'm, I'm still Hopeful that will happen, but I think one thing is for certain, the pandemic and the related changes that have come about have really speeded up some of the, uh, the technology changes that we are seeing across the globe. Uh, but there are, in my view, several underlying factors that we, are, we probably want to be aware of. And I'll, I'll pick a couple of them uh, just uh, for the purpose of our conversation. I think the first one that will have a significant impact uh, for organizations as a whole, whether you're a law firm or you're a company, uh, is the change to the way we work. So at Cisco, we call it the future of work, right? And, and how organizations operate in, the, in, in this new dynamic environment. Uh, and let's take the office as an example here, right? Uh, one of the interesting things I read uh, was the, that the growth of the office as we know it, right? A building in one place with all employees coming in and sitting and doing the work on, at desks was actually an invention of the East India Company. Uh, and they set up the first office uh, near London uh, to make sure that all their clerks and their officers were actually doing their work, right? And that principle to a certain extent has not changed since the late 1700s, early 1800s. Uh, in many respects, particularly in our profession, uh, we manage still by proxy. And by that, I mean, how long you spend, how many hours you spend in office uh, is kind of a proxy for deciding how good you are at your work. Uh, and, and it's kind of a, even if you are the best litigator on the planet, right, uh, you're still expected to show your face in the office and, and they expect their juniors to be in the office and the like. Uh, 
back in 2020, uh, actually came to show that this is changing. Uh, in And this is a global survey, obviously. So 58% of people expect that they will work eight or more days from home. Uh, something like 98% of all meetings in the future will have at least one or two members attending uh, via hybrid mode, right? Via, via a tool like Zoom or WebEx, uh, like what we use. So what does that do? It means basically that the workforce today prefers having the flexibility to be able to do their work from locations other than their primary office. And, uh, and what this does to us as, as an industry or as an organization is it changes the way we manage our people. It changes the way we manage our work. Uh, it changes the way we, we look at how performance is rated, as an example. So how do we move from a management by proxy model to more of an outcomes-based model, a deliver deliverables-based model? How do we define it? I think those are areas which are still, uh, which are going to be a huge change, uh, but which are still to be worked through, right? So uh, this is a complete change in the way we work and the way we think about things. Uh, the reality is though, we will find a way to work through this. Uh, but I think what we have to do is the way we look at solutions, the way we look at work, everything needs to change. Uh, the industry is doing so to a large extent. Uh, we need mentioned Meta and uh, the other organizations which are trying to take us to the next level. Uh, but to meet the requirements of a country like ours, uh, where the government is a very important part of how we, uh, how we get benefits to our citizens, uh, I think it's also important that we take the government bodies with us uh, through this process. Uh, I do have an example from my uh, work space. Uh, as many of you who are litigators have probably seen, uh, Cisco WebEx, which is one of our uh, tools, is used by many of the courts in this country. Uh, and I think my experience in that area was very interesting because uh, I'm not a litigator, as you can imagine. So my experience of litigation is from probably you know, 22 years ago, I think I was informed uh, the other day. Uh, and, and so when, I was, when we were having these discussions with the various courts and the judges who sit on these, uh, on the, in those uh, uh, courts, I was, I was very pleasantly impressed because the reality is uh, many of these uh, ladies and gentlemen are very progressive. They are looking at the high court, would be, uh, would be conducting hearings via a virtual tool that as a lawyer, you could join in from your home. Now, of course, you have seen all the various WhatsApp forwards, which create problems because of that, people being not well-dressed or whatever. But, uh, but the reality is... Uh, there is a full need and there is a real uh, interest in doing so. And, and the, I, I will still say that, and being a lawyer, I do need to be a little cynical and a little critical perhaps. Uh, the reality is that implementation is still spotty, right? So uh, when you are going and making a change of this nature, I think we need to take the entire ecosystem with us. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Even today, the hearings might be virtual, uh, you may get the order or the judgment via email or on a website, but frankly, the filing system is still antiquated. The Vakalat Nama still need to be signed physically. Uh, so, so until we change the entire model, and this, this goes across the board uh, to the points that Vinit was making earlier, right? So if you're going to have smart contracts and the like coming in, how do we handle stamp duty, right? Uh, how do we make sure that those documents are things? So, so what is really required from an overall perspective is for us to look at the big picture and figure out how do we change the entire ecosystem? And that's the way we would go. Uh, the second thing is, I think sometimes in organizations, we need to understand the organization we are selling to as well. So if you are dealing with the government, for example, uh, one of the issues we had right at the beginning of the implementation of WebEx was with regard to where that... Uh, software would be installed, right? Uh, and there are government bodies which are focused on running data centers for the government. So if you try and sell them a cloud-based solution, uh, let me say the response was less than uh, happy, right? So, so there were ways we had to work around it and to, and, and maybe it makes sense for the government really to, to consider cloud-based solutions because, you know, it saves you money, it saves you effort, it saves you energy. But, uh, 
But those are things that we need to work through. And I expect over the next few years, we will see that come in uh, as, as people understand it more. Uh, there, is a, there is a key, uh, there's a, there is a Chinese quote, you know, the Indian and Chinese civilizations are so old and so, uh, so shall I say, sophisticated that I often enjoy reading them just to hear what people said. And this is an ancient quote, by the way, but it's some, so very relevant for us today. Uh, the quote is, the, when the winds of change blow, some people build walls, the others build windmills, right? And, uh, and so I think, how do we make sure that our country and our industry and our profession are the ones building windmills as opposed to building walls? I think that's the key focus for us. Uh, digitization will, is a force for good. Uh, it will change things very positively, but there are some real, real concerns there as we work through this. Uh, the first, I think I would say is, when I look back again at organizations, security per se is a big issue, and I'll come to that in a second. But if you look at the way a company moves to a hybrid work model, where you have people working from different locations, it's not just about giving them a laptop. It's not just about giving them access to, a, to their email. You have to consider the entire day that your employee spends. And, and if you look at it, there will be at least 15 to 20 different applications or software that your employee uses, whether it's to file expense statements, whether it's to enter their time, whether it's to write emails or message their team members, et cetera, et cetera, right? So when you allow that to happen, security comes into the picture because the, your security system needs to cover not just your emails and the like, but it needs to cover all the apps that your employees use. It needs to cover all the devices your employees use. Uh, so it could be a cell phone, it could be a laptop, it could be an iPad, whatever. Uh, and in addition to that, the moment you have moved your people out of your office, uh, what we call in the security domain, the attack surface has increased exponentially. There are so many more ways that you know, bad actors can, can come in and try to uh, try to create mischief. Uh, and to be honest, this is a real concern right now. I think a, a recent survey by one of the security companies called Checkpoint uh, showed that there had been a, like something like a 42% increase in cyber attacks in 2022 alone, right? In the first half uh, up to June. Uh, Cisco security system, and we have a team dedicated to handling cyber attacks we on average handle more security attacks than there are Google searches in the world, right? So, so there is a real need here for us to build it. And now going back to our Cisco WebEx example for the courts, security becomes even more important. Imagine if somebody can download a video and deep, make it a deep fake uh, statement and that spreads on social media. Imagine the kind of unrest that could create, which is completely fake. Uh, in addition, thanks to the recent changes in the world, uh, we see that a lot of state actors are involved as well in cybersecurity. So it starts with simple phishing attacks. I think many of you would have noticed after the pandemic, you find a lot of spam messages coming to you saying your bank account is closing or you have won some money in a lottery or whatever. But it goes from there all the way to ransomware, where we have seen law firms being attacked uh, and their client data being stolen, for example. So, so as you can see, security becomes a critical issue uh, as we work through this. And, uh, but overall, I think uh, in partnership with the government and with, uh, with various industry bodies, I believe we will we'll find a way through, uh, but there are, there are serious gaps. So I will, I will stop there so I can allow Anand to say a few words, uh, but, uh, but thank you for this opportunity again. And thank you, Dr. Amna for such a great introduction. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Navneet, for those very important in insights that yes, disruptive technologies are a force for good, but yes, there are some very important real concerns too. Hybrid indeed is a reality, but yes, one cannot ignore the related aspects of security amongst others. Thank you so much, Vineet. Very important insights coming from that keynote address.